there's a learning <laughs> process, you know, yeah. and, and you should continuously be learning whatever resource you're using. Uh, mitigate your risk as best as you can, but you can never eliminate it. You can never know everything. And you certainly can't predict the future, like when your furnace is going to go out and your <laughs> water heaters or. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Creating Wealth Podcast, where I, Kyle, from Kyle Curtin Real Estate, interview local top dogs in the real estate investing, wealth building, and personal finance industries. Let's build together. What's up, guys? The guest on this week's episode of the podcast is absolutely phenomenal. Kelsey has a really cool story and an impressive real estate background, especially after beginning from a completely different market all the way across the country. In this episode, Kelsey and I chat about some of the lessons that are imperative to being a successful real estate investor, the awesome strategy that she deployed to do her first deal and significantly decreased her risk when jumping into the game, and being comfortable being uncomfortable. Let's jump right into the episode. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 84 of the Creating Wealth podcast. Today, we have the great pleasure of chatting with Kelsey Soderland, an amazing home inspector and owner of Soderland Inspections out of Worcester, as well as a real estate investor. What's going on, Kelsey? How are you? Very I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm super, super excited. So to kind of jump right into things, you know, like tell us kind of a little bit about how you got into real estate, you know, a little bit about your backstory and, you know, kind of getting into like home, being a home inspector and that kind of thing. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Uh, well, I was inspired by my dad. He gave me the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, surprise, surprise, <laughs> when I was, uh, I think I was in high school. Nice. And at the time, I just kind of tossed it in the corner because what did I care? I was in high school. A few years later, um, he retired and he bought a diesel Volkswagen Jetta and a Scamp, which was like a tiny camper trailer. And then he drove around the country to tax sale auctions. This is like 2011, 2012. So he bought a few properties, got some parcels of land. Um, and that was sort of my introduction was watching him do that and then managing those properties after a period of time. And uh, he was inspired by his father. So although we've never worked together, it's sort of, it runs in the family. That's the coolest thing in the world. Wow. Especially like that young, you know, like to get that kind of influence and like, yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, that, that, that was definitely good for me. And then at college age, I picked up Rich Dad, Poor Dad and actually read it. And then <laughs> uh, that got me started on my own investing journey where I was hands on and doing my own things. So I got my first deal done in uh, 2014. I was 25 at the time. It was a seller finance deal. So that was fun on a kit cabin in a rural town. It was owned by a doctor who was very... Uh, eclectic person like many Seattleites are <laughs> and there was uh, little hidey holes boards in the house that would kind of open ceiling pieces would come down you could flip it back up latch it and stash things inside so it was a fun little property yeah lots of character <laughs> yes definitely how, um, how did you kind of find that one like just like word of mouth or like you like seeing that it was, on something or it was on the MLS oh nice yeah that's interesting. Yeah, it, I didn't know that you could do um, like seller finance deals like from the MLS. Like, was it like a? Oh, for sure. You just gotta ask. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's the coolest thing in the world. So what? Um. I guess like, what kind of uh, you know, kind of gave you like the spark? I guess you could say like you know to kind of learn in a little bit about you know like working with your dad and stuff like that to then actually like, you know, wanting to kind of jump in and like, you know, starting to look for a property and wanting to really kind of like dive in. Okay. I, uh, I was living in Thailand at the time. I spent about six years over there. I went to university, studied international business management. And over there, uh, people are, people who aren't Thai citizens are really limited on the kind of work that they could do. So I could basically be an English teacher or I could start a business. And I figured once I had, uh, left college, I should probably, you know, get a life. 
And uh, being an English teacher in Thailand wasn't going to be my long-term gig. So I decided to come back to the States. And uh, ultimately, my goal at the time was to get a couple of rental properties so I could go back to Thailand and then just live off of my rental income. Um, I'm still here, but I am <laughs> <laughs> on my way to other goals they've developed over time. Wow. Work in progress. <laughs> yes. Yep. It's always changing, right? That's Life, interesting. Uh, goes differently than you'd expect sometimes. Definitely. That's interesting. So like, how was like the, is the exchange rate? Like, you know, like just like the, the cost of living, I guess, like drastically different and like. So this is like 10 years ago now. Um, but when I was in college over there, I had a budget of about $200 a month and that covered my rent, gas, groceries, going out on the weekends with my friends. Yeah. Oh so my it's, goodness. Uh, it's definitely much more affordable over there. I left <laughs> college with no debt just because it was much more affordable. Wow. That's insane. I, I spent like almost $200 at Home Depot last night. Like, right? <laughs> <you know>? like, <laughs> I was looking at sodas the other day and thinking about, oh yeah, I remember when I was in junior high, I could get one of these for like a buck 25. They're not that much anymore. <laughs> wow. So that's interesting. So like, you know, you got that seller finance deal. Yeah. Um, how was it kind of like stabilizing that one and like, you know, kind of fixing up all those uh, like beam, uh, you know, like boards and, and character, I guess you could say. <laughs> we really didn't do anything to it. I rented it out at cost for a couple of years, I think. And then I actually sold it for a really modest profit, like a few thousand dollars yeah. and um, moved on from there. We didn't really do a lot with that one. It was sort of my first foray into, oh, wow, you can really do this. The things people say are true. Yeah. So, yeah more than a, than a money maker, it was uh, a learning experience for sure. A very yeah. valuable one. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So how, um, I guess, kind of like, you know, bouncing right off of that project, you know, making like a little bit on it, learning like a ton of lessons and, you know, uh, a little bit of experience kind of in the game. What, um, what was kind of like your plan after that, you know, in terms of like, you know, wanting to buy another property or kind of. So I was going to wholesale and I did successfully actually a house out of that same neighborhood. Wow. Um, that one, I think was probably a lot more formative for me uh, because I, I jumped in, I had the bandit sign out, gal called and I had a conversation with her. She worked from home and then was out of town a lot, just didn't want to have to deal with the hassle of working with a realtor. So I straight up told her, it's like, okay, so 70% of the ARV, less repairs and my fee, I'll wholesale it for you. you. Don't have to deal with the realtor. I'll walk through once, maybe twice, boom, done. And she said, okay. And then I said, okay. okay. And then I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I had no idea what to do. So I panicked. <laughs> and I, I'm trying to put this lady off. Like, okay, well, I can make an appointment with her in a couple of days from now. And then I've got a couple of days to find someone to partner on this deal with me and show me how to get it done from here. Cause I didn't yeah. have any contracts. I didn't, I didn't have anything, right. I was not expecting it to be this easy. And <laughs> so I called someone, um, Mike Sumsky, if you're listening, shout out, thanks for your help. <laughs> I still think about you. <laughs> um, I found an investor local in my area who uh, had a, a great reputation and someone I felt I could trust uh, working on this deal with me uh, would have something to lose, whether, you know, it yeah. was, well, more than just the money in this deal, right? Um, and he was super helpful. He showed up, we went to the appointment together. He did the negotiating with the gal and it was just hands-on front and center, sitting at the table with them. Awesome learning experience. He actually bought the deal, gave me my wholesale fee. And then I was, I was off to the races. That was deal number two. Uh, and that one was a lot more challenging because I didn't know what to do. It was hurry up, pick up that ball and run and pick up the next one and run. So <laughs> yeah, from there, I house hacked one of my father's properties. I've done a lot of dabbling. Uh, I have some experience with notes. I have flipped a few mobile homes now. So a little here, a little there. Yeah. Jack of all trades, master of none, just like a home inspector. <laughs> <It's> very <laughs> typical. <laughs> wow. 
You know, it's it's always really crazy too, especially in real estate. Like, you know, kind of like learning as we go, and you know, either like exactly, you know, if the case is like, you know, if you have something going on that you know is really big that you've you know been trying to do for a while. So like, you know, in your case, it would be a wholesale. You know, in somebody else's, it could be like you know just putting like a house hack under contract or something, or yeah, even like something like off market or something, and you know, just going from like, all right, I have this under contract. I have no idea what to do now, you know, yeah. and like, it's, it's interesting, like how, how like almost backwards it works sometimes, because like, I know, like, this is like, especially kind of the way that I thought, you know, going into real estate initially was like, oh, you know, all right, like I need to learn as much as I can about everything. So I know what to expect. And like, you know, everything will be hunky dory and like, there'll be no surprises. That's not how yeah. it works. <laughs> no, never. There will always be a surprise. I, it doesn't matter how well read or how experienced you are. Every deal is different. There's yeah. always something surprising. Yeah. <laughs> Just it's how it goes. And you can learn for the rest of your life you could spend just learning about real estate, different strategies. And that would be great, but you wouldn't have accomplished anything because at some point you just have to jump in and, exactly. and do the thing. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And like, to your point too, of like, you know, being able to, to cruise through that deal, you know, after finding, you know, like a team member and like, you know, someone that you can, you know, like give value to and they'll help you out and, you know, just kind of like finding that team and everything. Yeah. Is, you know, insane. Like the like yeah. like you said, you know, like they can literally take you from, you know, not having any idea of what's going on and like, you know, just having like a verbal agreement type of thing until like you're actually at, you know, the closing table table or, you know, whatever it may be. And um it's unbelievable, you know, because like if you try and like just learn all this stuff on your own and like trying to Google stuff and everything, like it's yeah that's great, but it might not it I should say it probably won't be as practical as like like you did, you know, like just finding people in your market that are, you know, that have done this before, you know, giving them obviously something of value for their time and like helping you out and everything and definitely, you know, like starting a relationship there as well, you know, like yeah. for, for the future and, and that type of thing. Other people have definitely been the number one factor in my success. Yeah. Networking Same, is it's insane. More bang out of bang for my buck of my time. Yeah. <laughs> definitely worth it yeah and it's unbelievable you know what i mean it, like the thing that that always kind of gets me too is like especially the day and age that we live in where like you know you can hop on instagram like find like you know 10 investors that are in you know your town or your city or down the street from you or whatever it is yeah you know and like shoot them a dm and be like oh hey you know like i'm kelsey i'm kyle you know i'm like just jumping into this thing for the first time and you know, like I've seen your posts and, you know, I'd love to get a cup of coffee, you know, or, or get a drink or whatever the case may be. And, um, yeah, you know, like I just, it always blows my mind, you know, like most of us, you know, like real estate investors in general, I guess, are, are just so apt to help each other. Like just because of, you know, how, how much of a team based sport it really is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like who knows, you know, like after doing that, that deal with that guy that you were talking about, like, who knows, maybe like tomorrow, you know, he'll reach out to you again and be like, oh, hey, like, you know, I remember we did that one last time. Like, you know, here's another one I got. Like, you know, what do you think? And like, you just like, you never know, you know, like it's, it's just always an unknown. And it's, um, it's, it's so like the barrier to entry to make like an actual really good team around you is, uh, is extremely low, you know, with all like uh -huh. the technology and everything we have. And like, like, I don't know, like. I'm kind of curious what, you know, even like people like your dad, you know, like a little bit, you know, older or whatever, um, you know, would say about like creating your network and everything like, you know, before like pre-internet and stuff like that. And just kind of like how it worked back then, you know, <laughs> and like, it, it, I mean, it, you know, it wasn't that long ago, like bigger picture, but yeah. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Things were very different then. There was, there was no internet, so. Yeah. That one was off the table. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So from there, I guess, like how, um, what kind of got you into the side of, you know, wanting to, to kind of learn a little bit more about like the home inspector side, you know, and kind of like jumping into that, um, that okay. profession. 
So my second job ever, I was a house painter and then being in Seattle again with, you know, the eclectic Seattle lights, um, <laughs> it was always super fun to go inside other people's houses and sort of see how they lived. And there's a lot of uh, Victorian houses in downtown Seattle. And those were my favorite because there's all sorts of features in those homes that we don't use anymore, like dumb waiters or the doorbells that you turn and ring when you twist them and all kinds of fun stuff. So now it's my job because as a painter, I would look at those things. I wouldn't touch it unless it was a surface that I was repairing or painting. Yeah. But now it's my job to go through <laughs> attic to crawl space and touch all of the things and see if they operate or not. So I, I feel like a, a little detective and uh, it's just, I get a lot of instant gratification out of, Ooh, here's a defect and just exploring properties, yeah, especially historic ones. <laughs> yeah. It's funny you say that about those, um, like the doorbells that you like, like twist. Cause I, I yeah. saw on somebody's Instagram story that's in like Southern mass. He literally posted like yesterday you know, of him going up to this doorbell. And I'm like, dude, what is that? I'm like, I've never seen anything like that before. I'm like, yeah, I'm waiting for a gumball to pop out. He like twists it and it rings and everything. <laughs> it does look like that, yeah. <laughs> you know? That's absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, no, that it's that's um incredibly interesting. You know what I mean? Like I don't know, it's it's so much fun, like just going into basements and stuff, especially in, you know, some of those buildings, even, you know, around Massachusetts, like, you know, in like Lowell's and in Worcester's, you know, and some of these like, you know, cities that have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years and yeah. you know, the, the structures are still the same. You know, and just, you know, some of the some of the different aspects that you see, you know, that have been there literally since then and like still holding strong. It's it's yeah. always really cool because like each one's going to be, you know, a heck of a lot different most of the time. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. It's it's super fun. Yeah, definitely. So what's um, what's kind of like what's like the craziest thing that you've seen in a basement or like something that like that might like really <laughs> stick out to you, you know, like. Whether it was like weird or like kind of Jimmy rigged or. So we were at a property and we almost missed this. There was the front porch. I was working with a, a teammate at the time. I got started with another home inspector working for somebody else. And um, we're working on inspecting this property on the front porch. There was maybe a two by two by six inches to maybe a foot tall, like a concrete block a big slab yeah um she wouldn't think anybody would move but you know, they were curious what was underneath there so we slided out of the way have a look we peek down inside and there's actually a mattress down there and um it's like a little crawl space i think there was like cinder block foundation walls around it there's a little plastic bag with who knows what hung on the wall it looked like if somebody was going to be hidden away somewhere, that's mm. where you would put them. And then they would never be able to move that concrete block by themselves. So that was a little suspicious. Yeah, a little. <laughs> yeah, that one's, that's been written down in history as the murder room. Mm. <laughs> then I guess, so the buying, buyer's agent had asked the listing agent what that was about. And the seller's story was that it was their meditation room. Okay. which apparently had not been used for a very long time. And I could only argue that this would be a reasonable possibility if this were like uh, some sort of sound isolation. You know, what, what is it when you go, these float in this pod and you can't hear anything? Sensory deprivation tank. It's yeah, a yeah, sensory yeah. deprivation. That's the only thing that I could think you would need to be in that space for. <laughs> so this is definitely the craziest thing we've found. <laughs> That's interesting. Oh my God. <laughs> that, yeah, that one was a lot of fun. We've seen hoarder houses too. And we really, we see everything. And then I say that, and next week I'm going to inspect something and just be blown away. So <laughs> yeah. we'll see what else it sounds like it's, it's always exciting. Yes. Yes, it is. Every, every property is different mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So Kelsey, what's kind of your, your drive and your vision? For the long what is my term? drive my vision for the long term well i'm still set on my rental properties and just living off that passive income mm -hmm. um my drive i think ultimately is freedom of choice yeah 
if I have the opportunity to have that income, the cash flow coming in every month, I've got the freedom to choose where I want to live, where I want to go, when I want to go there, what kind of vacation I want to take, or, you know, um, a buddy of mine, he's actually, I'm picking him up from the airport tomorrow. He's coming for a visit. He's very nomadic, doesn't really have a place. He travels from Airbnb to Airbnb, country to country to see this friend or that friend. I actually met him in school in Thailand. So oh, wow. it's been international for a very long time. Um, I think I look at that and I sort of reflect on my own choices and my own lifestyle. What am I doing that would enable me to have that same level of freedom of choice? Yeah. That's awesome. It's so true. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, just to be able to just be independent, you know? Yeah. From, uh, you know, people like, or doing the things that you're obligated to do rather than the things that you choose to do. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. If I didn't have to go to work tomorrow, what would I do with my time? Where would I spend that time? So. That's cool. But, yeah, definitely. Especially yeah. for like traveling and stuff too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> I highly recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> leaving the, leaving the so the six years that I spent in Thailand, you know, I went, I was in college, so I learned a lot there, but I actually learned more from my life experiences being abroad than I did from, you know, my entire college education. <laughs> so you can get abroad to somewhere that, uh, it's very different. Somewhere that doesn't speak English as a primary language. Definitely recommend that. Yeah. It can be very formative. That's crazy. I, I guess, like, how was it kind of, like, going over there for the first time? And, like, were you, like, the only person, like, speaking English? And, like, was no. there, like, a challenge there? <laughs> well, so because going to simple tasks, like going to the grocery store, that does become an adventure. So most people in Thailand do speak at least some English. There's signs posted on the freeways they have thai and english writing so it's it's actually pretty easy to navigate um but if i'm trying to figure out what the ingredients are on this thing or where this thing is uh it takes a little bit of learning it's a challenge yeah. that's cool though wow <laughs> it sounds like it was uh you know, kind of quite the adventure and, you know, kind of like the life experience, you know, to, to be able to pick up like, I don't, I don't know, like just different things about life in general, I guess, like aside from, you know, like the, the education. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I think the thing I like to bring up the most is I learned how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. There's a lot going on that I didn't understand what was going on. I was just standing there hanging out, waiting for something to happen yeah. I wasn't necessarily comfortable but then I just you know you get used to it and nothing terrible happens you yeah. know so and that's been super beneficial to me investing in real estate too uh, if I hadn't learned to be comfortable with being uncomfortable I wouldn't have answered the phone when that gal called and yeah. I did that first wholesale deal I wouldn't have then reached out to Mike Sumsky to say hey I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm absolutely clueless, super uncomfortable here. Can you help me? <laughs> you know, I, yeah. it's been a very useful skill to have. I wouldn't be on this podcast right now <laughs> talking to you. <laughs> That's interesting. I, I really like that, that, um, I guess that kind of like connection, you know what I mean? It, it's so true in real estate, especially, you know, cause like, like we were talking about earlier, you know, like the amount of times that, like you just like, you know, put something under contract or like just have like, you know, a baseline knowledge of kind of what's going on. And then all of a sudden you have to figure out like a bunch more stuff. Like yeah. it's, it can be kind of scary, you know, but I, I feel like it's a really important skill to learn. Um, you know, especially, you know, kind of coming into real estate or even, you know, like doing like your first flip or your first Airbnb or, you know, whatever the case is. Like if you're trying to do anything, like you're going to be uncomfortable that first time. Oh yeah. You know? and yeah. Like, you'll probably be uncomfortable the second time too. Yeah. <laughs> and every time I do a new deal now, I'm still uncomfortable. Yep. Exactly. No, but it's, it's, it's a good, it's a good uncomfortable. It is. If I weren't uncomfortable, I probably wouldn't be aware. I would be much more likely to make a mistake. And there's a lot at stake when you're working in real estate. Yeah. Right? This, this isn't chump change. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, especially now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. Ooh, 
Kelsey, what is the most important lesson that you've learned over your career? The most important lesson that I've learned over my career. I think I'm going to say, do it. Just do, do it. it. Just do it. It's really simple. You just have to do it. And of course, I'm oversimplifying, but you have to dip your toe in at some point. You have to just do the thing. Yeah. No, I totally agree. And Nike got it right. <laughs> <laughs> Not sponsored. <laughs> um, no, you're, you're totally right. You know, and that's, that's something that's, that's really valuable is like, you know, like we can always, you know, read books or listen to podcasts or, you know, even like have conversations with people while you're at a meetup or, you know, just out and about. But I mean, it's almost like, like that's, that's really, really good knowledge and everything that you're learning. And, and it's definitely life changing, but uh -huh. I feel like, you know, you can only learn. Well, I got to figure out how to word this. <laughs> like there's only so much that you can kind of pick up and, you have to like, you know, actually apply it, you know, for it to for actually sure, like, yeah. take effect, <laughs> you know, matter how much, you know, if you don't apply that knowledge, yeah, it's not providing you the value that it could, you're not getting exactly. anything out of it. Exactly. You yeah. know, and like the amount of lessons and everything that, that you're going to learn from taking action and, you know, it's, it's important, you know, and like, if you're going to be in this for the long game, you know, like whatever your strategy is, like the thing that's really interesting and that I've seen like firsthand with my property was basically like you know when we keep buying properties and doing deals and everything you know like we're signing up for you know hopefully everything that's glamorized you know like you know building up the equity in this property and living for free and financial freedom and you know the whole shebang but also you know cut with that comes all like the issues and like you know you're gonna have to work your way through things and like mm -hmm. things are gonna happen you know, like you're going to have two oil tanks and a furnace crap out on you two weeks. Oh, yeah. About it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and like, like if you want to be around for a long time, like, you know, like you just kind of have to accept that. Yeah. You know, like you're taking on all the potential benefits and you're also taking on the lessons, I guess. Yeah. You, I guess you could say. And like, you know, not that it's definitely not, you know, like like failure or anything. It just comes with the territory. You know, and like if you're able to kind of like train yourself to, you know, be able to work through issues and like, you know, just kind of keep learning. And yeah, I mean, like, you know, when you take action, you know what I mean? Like the first time that you do like a backsplash in a kitchen, like it might not come out that good, you know, uh -huh. but like it's that's just part of the territory, you know, like. Well, the first time that you drove a car, you probably weren't that great. Exactly. When you were a baby learning to walk, probably didn't didn't do that great at first. How many times mm -hmm. did you fall on your face? Yep. And that's. The same thing in real estate. We hopefully don't fall on your face, but <laughs> there's a learning process, you know, yeah. and, and you should continuously be learning whatever resource you're using. Uh, mitigate your risk as best as you can, but you can never eliminate it. You can never know everything. And you certainly can't predict the future, like when your furnace is going to go out and your water <laughs> heaters or. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree, you know, and it just. It's just something that, you know, I mean, like the first time it like, I guess you could say if you are taking action, you know, and, you know, like just doing it, um, you know, like you're just kind of building up that baseline for the first time, you know, and like, yeah, you know, like you're probably there's probably a, a decent chance that you're not going to like absolutely kill it, like whatever you're trying to do on the first shot. I mean, you might and like, Act like that's as fantastic. If. <laughs> Act as if. Exactly. You know, and like. I don't know, you know, like if you're just able to kind of accept that, like, you know, you might not do that good on the first time around, but like the thing is, is that you took action and like the next yeah. time around, you know, you'll be able to, you know, took what you did wrong the first time and learn from it and everything and just, just keep pressing forward. Yeah. It's just sure. it's part of the ride. <laughs> yeah. After that first deal, even if you don't make any money on it, you've yep. done the thing. It's a reality now and you mm -hmm. can go and do these other things with confidence. Exactly. And I feel like that's something that's really big too, especially for like your first property, you know, and whatever you're trying to do is like, I feel like, you know, being that early in the journey, like it's really like the education and, and the lessons and like really kind of like, I guess, build an equity in yourself 
like in like just building the skill sets and and doing some of the reps and like being banged around a couple times and you, you know like just it like pretty much a lot of like mindset and like actually you know kind of like physical stuff like you know I don't know, like repointing like the brick chimney behind you or something, you know what I mean? Or like doing a water <laughs> heater or whatever it is, you know, like I feel like it's, you know, especially in the beginning, you know, it's really, really crucial to, to just be learning as much as you can, like right off the bat. And like, yeah, I mean, you know, like we're doing, you know, like we're all looking to do this to make a profit at, at some point, you know what I mean? And that you yeah. kind of is, is a big factor, but I feel like, you know, if you're looking to kind of be sustainable long term, you know, if you're able to learn as much as you can from that first property and learn those lessons as early as you can, you know, it's going to be easier to kind of build up and be sustainable. You know, I kind of build up that that shell and of, you know, just kind of being resilient and being able to, you know, just deal with issues as they come up. And I don't know, I just I feel like it's especially in the beginning, like the education is is extremely, extremely valuable for sure. For sure. And being able to roll with the punches will get you from yeah. A to B. And that's just where you're trying to go. Exactly. It, it really is, you know, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kelsey, how do you define wealth? How do I define wealth? This one I'm usually have... kind of trips people up a little bit. And I love to ask it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to circle back to freedom of choice. Yeah. Because if I didn't have wealth financially, I would have much less freedom of choice. Yes. Yeah. No, a hundred percent, you know, and just kind of like, you know, I feel like that will kind of trickle into like a lot of other areas of your life too. You know what I mean? Like if you're mm -hmm. able to have that time freedom back, like, you know, now you're able to like exercise every day or you know, go out and, I don't know, like, go on a run or, you know, that's exercise, but <laughs> I, I don't know, or like, you know, cook something really crazy for dinner every night, you know, because you're not trying to like rush in and out and, and, you know, do all these things and whatever, you know, like, you'll just, I don't, I don't know, it's just, it's interesting. Like, if you're able to kind of reclaim that time freedom back, like, you'll mm -hmm. be able to, to do a lot of those other things that you might not be able to on a day to day. You know, which could hopefully also result in, you know, more happiness, like, you know, every day and that kind of thing. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you aren't tied up actually being at work in your nine to five where you've got, so you've got more financial freedom or you have more time freedom, you can then apply it to whatever you want, wherever you want. Is that with your family at home? Is that moving across the country to spend more time with them? Is that going overseas to get away from them <laughs> or go on a vacation? You Probably know. both. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, um, yeah, freedom of choice, either by time or, or by finances. Money doesn't buy happiness, but it certainly helps. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. I hear you. <laughs> cool. Um, also, I got one more question for you. The question okay. is, do you read? And what is your favorite business investing or real estate book that you would recommend to anyone? Or like, you know, podcasts or audiobooks, whatever you like. <laughs> All right. I, I'm definitely more of an audiobook person. I like to be on the move while I yes. take, it, take that in. Um, and I'm going to, I think I'm gonna have to circle back, just be super typical here, uh, rich dad, poor dad, because mm -hmm. it's, it's digestible for everyone. And, it and it's really, it laid the foundation for me, that switch in mindset that allowed me to continue on and, and just be consistent in this venture. Yeah. So but but without that book that I threw away and then picked up again, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd be where I am today, you know, and yeah. I've read a lot of books since then or listened to them what have you, um, many of them very common recommendations in this field uh, <laughs> because they've been so frequently recommended. But I, I think without that one, I, I wouldn't be here at all. I totally agree with you. Like that book is, it's really something crazy. And it's funny you say that too about like your dad showing you that book in high school and then you kind of like brushed it off for a little while and like, oh, you know, it's whatever, you know? And then yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because like, so I'll tell like a couple of my buddies about that book and <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to call you out my man, but if you're watching this, you know who you are and I love you. <laughs> but 
some people I've, I've gotten a couple of my friends to actually like buy that book and i told yeah. them, I've, I've like preached it to the choir to them a million freaking times i'm like dude i'm like this book will completely change your life and he just hasn't read it and i'm like he hasn't All right. read it no has and he it... seen your property <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but, the fruits of your labor. I would take him through a tour of your property again. <laughs> and then uh, once you've got it all settled and, and rented out, I would show him your books. <laughs> if you're that close. <laughs> He's like, fine, buddy, don't read the book. But here here it is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny you say that. Like, it, it's just one of those things. And, like, I, I've gotten him to buy it. And, like, you know, it's come up a couple times, you know, like every couple months or whatever. He'll be like, oh, you know, maybe I'll pick up uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad again. I'm like, yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh, you do that. Does he have the audiobook version? Is that the the issue? No, it's it's a physical book. And I've told maybe him. Maybe he should listen to it on his way to work. That's a good point. I'll have to make a suggestion. <laughs> it's a little easier. Illuminate obstacles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's genius. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to try that. I'm going to text him right after this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I look forward to the update. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, seriously, like that book is like, like, I can't even put it into words. You know what I mean? Like it, that book starts so many, so many like incredible paths for, for tons and tons of people. And I've told him, I'm like, dude, I'm like, I paid $8 for this book on Amazon. I'm like, this will probably be like the highest return on investment in the entire world. <laughs> like this changed my entire trajectory of my life in a million different directions. I'm like, like this book, man. I'm like, you gotta check this thing out. I'm like, <laughs> like seriously, you know? <laughs> yeah, I actually. It's funny you say that about the um, the audio books too, because so I was never really into them, and I actually, yeah. I, I would just kind of prefer like you know the physical book with a highlighter and, and a pen, and uh, you know just making notes and stuff. And I actually, I listened to my first audio book like. I just finished it like a couple days ago or I think like a week ago and I was just kind of testing it out. I'm like, you know what? We'll, we'll try it. You know, on my way to work, like, you know, instead of doing podcasts, like try that instead. And you know something? I actually, I really, really liked it. And I read yeah. another one since, since then I'm like, wow. I'm like, you can like fly through books and like not even think anything of it. You yeah. know, I'm like, and it's, I'm like, I actually really dig this. I'm like, this is cool. How many hours does it take to get from cover to cover? You throw um, that into a work day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's where I so when I was I was painting, I was a house painter for about eight years. And so I spent forty hours a week <laughs> listening Cranking to podcasts, out books. Yeah. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, everything else. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. You don't have yeah. to think while you're working, then yeah, just mindless. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Maximize your time. Paint that wall. Or drive it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or driving or well, I mean, pay attention while you drive, guys, but you get the point. <laughs> you, you can listen to an yeah. audiobook while you drive. <laughs> That's another you know, how long is your commute? Thirty minutes each way, it's an hour a day, it takes you a week to get through one book and you didn't interrupt any other part of your life. Yep. It's crazy. I actually it's I'm I'm really, really pleased with um with how much, you know, I, I'm actually starting to really like it. Um the only thing I do kind of have an issue with, which I don't really know how to solve it, is like if I hear something while I'm driving, like I'll be going down the highway or something, and like something that like really hits me like a sack of bricks, and like something that like I want to write down, I'm like, shit, I'm like, how am I supposed to write this down? I'm going like 80 on the highway. I'm like, you know, what am I supposed to do? And I try and like, like pause it until I get to where I'm going and like just kind of keep that thought like going around, you know? Yeah, do you that, have uh, That I haven't Siri? figured out. Siri or OK Google, yes. put it on a voice notification or make it so that it hears your voice when you say OK Google or what have you, watch everybody's phones just went off <laughs> <laughs> and then repeat the message. That's genius. Then you're taking notes without having to take your hands off the wheel or your eyes off the road. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Give that a shot, maybe. Yeah. We get a lot of uh, a lot of action to take after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's genius. Yeah, honestly, like I've never really played around with it, like like Siri or, or anything. Like I just yeah, I don't know. But in that case, that could fix some problems. <laughs> Usually, I'm using it for okay, Google, set a reminder to do this thing at this time, and yeah, I don't I don't see why it wouldn't work for note keeping on audiobooks. 
That's genius. I'll keep you posted about that too. <laughs> All right. I hope it's helpful. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for coming on here, Kelsey. We're on, um, like, social media and stuff. Can you and, and your company be found? Like, email. I'll, I'll drop everything you got. All right. So my company is Soderland Inspections. You can find me on all of the social medias at Soderland Inspections, all one word. And uh, you can find me, my website, SoderlandInspections.com. You can send me an email. It's Kelsey, K-E-L-S-Y, at SoderlandInspections.com. You can even call me, 774-276-9868. Nice. Guys, definitely reach out to Kelsey. She's absolutely amazing. If you need inspections done, especially for multifamily, too, oh, um, yeah. definitely give her a buzz. I'm looking at it with the eye of an investor, too. So Yes, <laughs> which is huge. talk shop while I'm there. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so, so much for coming on here. Thank Kelsey. you for it, having it me. This was awesome. That was absolutely awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, guys, that concludes our Creating Wealth podcast episode for today. I want to thank every single person that has listened this far. It really means a lot to know that people can learn from me and with me as we build wealth together. Hopefully you can take home at least one thing from this podcast that will improve your life just a little bit. If you could, please check me out on social. That's at Kyle Curtin Real Estate on Instagram, Facebook, and I'm on Bigger Pockets. Until next time, let's build together. <laughs>